Happy New Year's. Welcome to the Paradigm Shift, episode 93. Ooh, 93. Final day of 2022. The most epic, iconic, breakthrough-oriented year of my life. I'm excited. We have a special guest on today. We're going to bring on uh, SEO juggernaut, awesome human being, Neil Patel. Big Dave, I see you. Let's get you on right now, and let's get this party started. Uh, I'd love to know in the chats what everybody's got going on uh, for the new year. We got a lot of special treats that we're excited about. Most importantly, take some time to reflect. Do better. Neil, we're going to bring you on to less than five, brother, less than five. Yeet. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Dave, like this, right? How you doing? I'm great, man. I want to thank you for coming on Office Hours and uh, co-hosting that with me. How, how much fun and how blessed am I that uh, through my career, it's evolved to hanging out with my friends and helping people. And uh, people ask me, you know, what do you do, man? I see you everywhere. I'm like, I hang out with my friends and help people. And uh, that's on my mission to empower over a billion people to be happy. And as I get to the end of the year, man, quantitatively, I, I see a difference. Progress is at hand and we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, hell yeah. And thank you for that. And I love being there. And you know, you can always count on me. So much fun doing life with you. Like, there's no better career or, that I can think of than doing what we do. Um, and it's no secret, right? Like combining, making a massive impact, unapologetically making a lot of money and, and just doing good and having fun. Uh, and I'm so blessed to be doing life with you. So thank you for all that you do as well. Yeah, what did it say too, right? Like making money the right way. Uh, there's so many people, look, I preach having an overlap agreement, right? I tell everyone, look, you know, Craig and I, we have an overlap agreement. He brings me a speaking engagement. He gets paid. I bring him one. I get paid. It's that simple. And so many people, you know, it, it's interesting. They are not abundant, right? So it, that's why I don't have a binding agreement. It's just a memorialization. Because in the end, I'm just not going to refer you anymore. I'm going to forgive you and pay for your happiness. But then some people take it the next step. They literally lie, manipulate, cheat, and steal, right? L literally try to uh, do things that are dishonest. And I don't think they understand what they're doing to themselves. They think they're doing it to other people. But what, then what exacerbates it even more, and I know this has happened to you, is that people have lied, cheated, manipulated, and stolen from you. And then they feel so guilty, they project to other people about you and blaming you. And it, it, it frustrates me. And when I catch people doing that, uh, you know, I stand up for my friends and I'm like, dude, you, you are so below the line. I pray for your happiness. And if you think you're going to get ahead, just remember this, the truth, it vibrates the fastest. And there's no way around it, under it, through it. The truth vibrates the fastest. So stop projecting. Look, if you make a mistake, own up to it. Try not to lie, cheat, manipulate, or steal. But if you do, I would think twice about what you're doing to yourself, not what you're doing to other people. Amen. Beautifully said. And I agree with every single word. Uh, also, you look super handsome today. So there's that. I wanted to ask you about New Year's. Um, two things. Number one, you're always looking for mm -hmm. the love and the lessons and everything that you do. I was curious for the audience today, what's one really impactful lesson that you learned in 2022 that you're excited to take with you 2023? And it's a two-part question, and we'll bring on Neil. And also, um, why is, aside from having new day resolutions, but also a new year's resolutions, extremely important? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Just remember, look, if you're not making mistakes, then it's God that's making the mistake. There's no reason for you to be here, <laughs> right? So if you're not making mistakes, God's made a mistake. You shouldn't be here. Uh, but furthermore, the lesson that I'm taking forward is actually related to New Year's resolve. Notice I didn't say New Year's resolution. Uh, and a resolution is resolve in motion, which is the behaviors that create progress in the direction that you think you want to go in for the year. Now, I used to kind of poo-poo or shit on uh, as the vernacular here on IG likes to say, uh, New Year's resolve and New Year's resolutions uh, because I'm a new day guy. I'm a daily practice guy. I send my five daily practices 
to give the meaning of the past and the trajectory of what you think you want in the future by practicing, utilizing the 24 hours you're given every day, understanding the infinite and limitations that are given to the past, the present, and the future. But one nuance, one epiphany that I got from this week, actually, for New Year's Resolve, is that we do utilize man-made construct linear time in order to facilitate the ability, which we don't have, to see progress. You see, everybody wants instant gratification. Everybody wants to see progress, but it takes time. And I believe a year is a perfect amount of time. Some things we can see within a day period, a delta. A delta means a change. Some teams in a week, sometimes in a month. But a year is a healthy baseline to baseline resolve of how my behaviors have impacted my progress. And so if I pick my prioritized trajectories, my prioritized objectives, my prioritized goals without attaching my emotions to the outcome, but simply to observe something I can't observe daily to keep me inspired and motivated on the path to be my potential, to be my best, to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of my best, a year is a good amount of time in order to check baseline to baseline a progress report on how I may adjust my trajectories, how I may reprioritize my trajectories for 2023. So I went from the king of don't have New Year's resolutions to, hey, New Year's resolve is about quantifying the baseline to baseline every year so that you can prioritize accordingly to what you think you want in 2023. I love that you're always evolving, right? Like. You just said, like, I used to be this way, but now I'm a little bit more aligned and I developed into this way. And I think that's beautiful. So, so I want to acknowledge you that. I'm going to bring on Neil right now. In the meantime, how many sexual cute croissants did you consume today? Too many for my wife to handle. That's why she's still asleep. Uh, and take that for what it is. <laughs> Dave, what is, what is one really positive, powerful lesson that you've seen me develop from you and apply this year? Humility. You know, I think any Wall Street guy who has so much talent like you have, unbelievable skill, great knowledge, and extraordinary desire, I rarely see someone that's in the same league of consistency that you are. In fact, you know, my, my friend's so consistent next to me. Remember, uh, grass does not grow on a busy street. Uh, take that for what it is. So for, for me, humility is a, a great lesson that you've learned this year, and you're really putting it into practice. Thank you, Dave. Neil, thank you for joining us. Great to see you. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, I love this guy, by, by the way. He never ages. He's amazing. <laughs> and happy early New Year's to both of you Same and everyone you. listening. Same to you, Neil. We met, your family we met and the kids behind you. <laughs> Neil, we met briefly at Web Summit. Uh, I'm excited to connect with you further today. The audience is in for a real treat. Guys, if you're not familiar, do a deep dive. Uh, Neil is amazing at many things, but one of the things he's been known to be the king of is SEO and, and online marketing and all that stuff. I know there's some people on here today that don't even know what SEO is. What exactly is it and how can it be very effective for someone to apply? Yeah, so SEO stands for search engine optimization. And uh, what that's all about is, sorry for the kid noise in the background. Never apologize, man. We love it's kids. It's so so, <laughs> Most, so search most is of them are bigger than Craig, so he loves them. <laughs> So SEO stands for search engine optimization. And what it's all about is um, ranking websites on Google. And it's when you ever do a search on Google, the top three spots or top one or two spots are paid ads. Then underneath that is all the organic quote unquote free results that you can get from ranking your own website. You know, you know, Neil, one of the lessons I learned from you and you, know, everyone says things differently and has a different participation in the perception of digital marketing, SEO, online business as well, is I've broken down your expertise into three areas. And I think it's important because you taught me to reverse the order of what you do. Uh, and you know, most people talk about traffic, conversion, and then monetization when it comes to SEO. Uh, and, and what you taught me was, Dave, what you want to do is create a vending machine. What you want to do is figure out the monetization of it first before you start driving traffic to it. Then figure out how much is it, you know, how much can I make over here? Because then you know what your budget is 
to create a community, to create traffic, to drive that community to wherever you want to convert them. And then you can work on, as you know, the economics, better traffic and better conversion according to the margins that you can make. So many people, you know, aren't even to the point where they can, you know, build traffic, but yet they get to a point where they have traffic and conversion and then they realize, holy shit, I'm losing money. Yep. No, yeah, you, you got to figure out the monetization first because once you figure out the numbers, you can figure out what traffic sources can you get that are going to be profitable for you and then just scale those up because they won't all be profitable and they won't all work for you. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Uh, Neil, I wanted to ask you this. Um, I, I was doing a, a deep dive on your content, as everybody should, because it's so knowledgeable and, and it's awesome. And, you know, one thing that, I, that I've done since I reinvented myself and started my brand is I do all my own copy. And it's a little time consuming, but I also believe it's one of the reasons why the audience has connected with me so much. Can't do it forever as you continue to scale. And one of the things that you were talking about uh, in your feed was AI content and yep. stuff like that. And people can tell, like, it's not really, it doesn't really form a, an emotional connection. So where do you draw the line? Where, where do you maybe use some of that or maybe not? Like, what would you suggest to that? So I think in its current form, AI is really good to help you generate ideas for content. Like you can put in some keywords. It'll give you a lot of topics to create social content for or blog posts for. Heck, it can even go as far as doing outlines for you or even writing some paragraphs or even a whole blog post. But the issue is, is tonality. Some of the solutions out there like Jasper allow you to select a tonality. So it kind of fixes that. But the quality is not there. How do you intertwine your experiences or Dave's experience in content using AI. It's just really hard to do that. You know, you can use AI as a starting point and then as a human, just go in and modify a lot of stuff. That's not bad, but AI is not at the point where it can just write everything for you. Yeah, I, I just did uh, a thing on this because um, what what is it? Chat, uh, MG, GPT, the, yeah. GPT. So chat GPT to me is one of the greatest starters uh, that there is. It's a great starter. But, you know, look at the brains on this uh, paradigm shift show here today. You know, if we had to pay to develop uh, this right here, it'd be trillions of dollars. So use it, right? Use it. And I, I use all things as a starting point. I listen to podcasts. I still study the Bhagavad Gita every day. And I, I study Lao Tzu and Dr. Wayne Dyer. Why? Because they're good starting points for me to generate and understand how things collaborate and coordinate today by seeing some ideas. So if you're gonna do your resume, you, you can use AI to start and then make it your own. Uh, Cause nobody out there is like Craig Siegel, let alone any computer. He's his own fingerprint. Neil's his own fingerprint. I'm my own fingerprint. And I think it's really, really important that we can get the efficiency and automation out of AI but you have to add that essence, your own skills, knowledge, and desire to whatever uh, content, especially that you do. Now, Neil, how do you do that for people? Because you are an expert at driving traffic, converting, and monetizing. But when I'm looking at, you know, and, and I work with you and your partners, you know, it seems as if everyone has their fingerprint right there on what they're doing. How do you figure out that uh, reconciliation between here's the blocking and tackling that I know, and now you got to make it your own. Yes. So the e easiest way is I look at it as, hey, what are you doing that's your own that's working for you? And what are the gaps? And then you go and focus on the gaps, go fix those. Um, and then when it comes to creating new content, you go and create it as much as possible. And then you give it to the person and you're like, hey, Please review, edit, adapt it to your own style and then go from there. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I love the frequency on this show. I got to ask what's on everybody's mind that's in the online space. Neil, how do you keep up with or perhaps even beat the algorithms these days as they constantly change and evolve? Or do you this, just forget about it? Yeah, uh, I kind of forget about it, but it's, a, it's in a unique way, right? So think of it this way. One of the biggest factors that Google uses to let's say rank a website is links. So like the more other websites that link to you, the higher you're gonna rank. Another factor that let's say Instagram or Facebook or TikTok uses to figure out how viral your video should go is engagement. 
if a video gets a ton of engagement, engagement could be likes, comments, shares, you get the point, retweets. It tells them, hey, we should show this more frequently. Now there's always these algorithms and they change on a regular basis. On any given day, there's at least one algorithm change for, uh, you know, if you look at all the platforms, there's at least one algorithm change. I think Google does around nine a day on average. So instead of trying to beat them, think about it. When you do a search on Google, you're not like, wow, Th this one should be at the top because it has the most links and it's the most optimized for Google. All you care about is you click on the result, did it give you what you're looking for? And if, if so, great. If not, you click the back button and you go to the next listing, right? With Facebook, you're not about like, oh, what about the algorithm and what are they doing here? You're just, just like, this content's great or it's not. In other words, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Google, they all optimize for one thing. That's for what the user wants. So if you want to beat the algorithms, don't Focus on what changes they're making. Focus on the user. Delight them. Knock their socks off. Create the best experience ever. And sometimes during some algorithm updates, you win. And in many cases, during other algorithm updates, you lose. But in the long run, if you do what's best for the user, you should win because that's what they're optimizing for. And that's what you should be optimizing for. Dave, what are you smiling at? Well, because that's... That's why you got to be consistent, right? I, I think the superpowers that I teach and that I uh, bestow so closely to me is consistency because uh, just like in sports, uh, Bobby Cox was the head coach of Atlanta. They made nine National League championships, one World Series. And I asked Bobby Co Cox, the manager of Atlanta, man, how, how do you do it every year? And he said, Dave, he goes, I read the book. He goes, and if I'm supposed to bunt, statistically, I bunt. If I'm supposed to have a hit and run, I don't try to outthink it all. And he works within the context of the analytics of baseball. And the only way the analytics though hold true with all the changes of winning and losing, like when you bunt, sometimes you're gonna win, sometimes you're gonna lose, is statistically you're gonna win more. And I think that's the nuance. Now, I, I have a, qu a quick one. I, I'm gonna put Neil on the spot. Neil and I have known each other for almost 20 years and uh, uh, in the early days, he would learn from me much more than I learned from him. And now I learn much more from him than he learns from me. But we were talking about New Year's resolve. And I see from the maturation and the evolution of Neil Patel, which I'm so I mean, heartfelt proud whenever there's the, the young superstars that I know are. And I'm, I'm going around the Luxor. We had the Hall of Fame exhibit. Uh, and I'm going around the Luxor and I'm looking at these two kids, a guy named Jeff Fenster and Neil Patel. I said, these two guys are going to run the world someday. You watch. I guarantee it. And Warren Moon, Lee Steinberg, uh, Eric Dickerson, all these guys are looking over. Oh, yeah, what do they do? And now I just saw Eric Dickerson uh, uh, this weekend, last weekend. And he's like, oh, my God, can you believe these two? And he remembered. Uh, so more importantly, uh, I see the major difference of Neil in those 20 years, this delta that I'm talking about, Neil, in some area that most people don't acknowledge, and I want to acknowledge it. You have made so much growth about your family. Like, I, it made my heart sing when we're doing stuff together, and every time we're doing something together, the only caveat is prioritization of your family. And the fact that your kids are behind you right now and everything on this weekend that you're taking the time, I just want to acknowledge how important it is with all the success that you've had, that you realize your greatest success is the beautiful family uh, that you've built and that you support and that you, your kids are amazing, your, your family's amazing. So I want to congratulate you. My question is, you've known me for 20 years. Yeah. Where's the, where's the delta from uh, the, the Dave that you met at Lee Steinberg to you know, the, whatever I am on a mission today to empower people? Yeah, so it, it, it's kind of crazy. When I first met you, and by the way, I, I've learned a lot from you over the years, and prioritizing family, believe it or not, was one of the things I learned from you. Even when we're at Web Summit, your daughter was there, which is really cool, and I hope one day my kids will start coming to some events and work with me if I have the luxury of that. Uh, I'm like knocking on wood, a little superstitious. But, uh, you know, when I looked at, when I first met you, Years and years ago, when we were in Vegas at Luxor for that, uh, what was it, Hall of Fame or some sort of ceremony for Warren Moon, I remember you were educating and you were giving a lot of advice. But the advice you were giving was mainly to a closed 
group of circles, you know, people that you'd meet, friends. The big thing that I've seen that you've done over the years, the big delta is you've taken your knowledge and your learnings. You've made a lot of mistakes. You've had a lot of successes. I've seen you try to wheel and deal and do things like the Miami Heat deal and some deals go through and work and some don't. But the big thing that I've seen you change over the last 20 years is you started to bring your knowledge to the masses and you're impacting future generations. Forget business, forget money. Yeah, you know, you've always done well. But the bigger thing is I think future generations are going to have a much better life because of the knowledge that you're sharing. And there's a lot of other people that are doing similar things. Like if you look at Ray Dalio, he's doing similar things. And I think it's amazing, right? Take everything that you learn. Don't just pass it on to your children. Pass it on to the whole world. And hopefully, the world will be a better place. And I think that's one of the best forms of education out there. And it's free. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, brother. I'm proud of you. Yeah, that, that was deep and emotional. And I just felt all of that. Uh, beautiful question and beautiful answer. I know we're going to land the plane with this. It, it's Saturday. It's New Year's Eve. I'm like, get the land the plane movement we're gonna land the plane with this <laughs> first of all happy and healthy new year to you guys uh, one thing that i've been doing as far as i know before it was even cool and trendy was i would have a specific journal entry as we go into the new year and i would kind of set the tone or a theme or a word whatever the case may be and it's always interesting to look back towards the end of that year and be like yeah i, I did set the tone and those things began to manifest I'm curious, do you guys do that? And if you do, Neil and Dave, what is a word or a theme that you're excited about as you lean into 2023? So, so for me, it's opportunity. I just see so much opportunity coming in the next 12 months. Everyone's like, ah, the economy's bad, the market's bad. I look at it as just a shit ton of opportunity. Hell yeah, I love it. You know, my career gone has gone from web one to web two to web 2.5 and into web three now. And I've gone from no brick and mortar to very few borders. And so my mindset, hard set, and handset is on uh, utilizing the limitlessness, the infinity, the abundance that, that I, I now have faith in. And Neil touched on it with people tend to at the new year, look at what they don't want, what other people want for them and what they're worried about. I actually have shifted my paradigm, no pun intended. My mindset, heart set, and hand set is on an acceleration of abundance of infinite thinking, finding out what I'm doing to interfere with my potential, not looking at driving towards a potential. And you know, this shift I think is really important for everyone else to make progress in because we live in a world of more than enough, more than enough of everything for everyone. And we just have to figure out what we're doing to interfere with it. And that's why I'm blessed to be in this room on a Saturday morning, on a holiday that the incredible Craig Siegel and especially my friend, Neil Patel, who's all grown up, uh, has shared this time with us. May everyone be more interested than interesting and be kind to your future self this next year. Happy New Year, both of you. I love you guys. Thank Happy you guys. Year. Happy New Year. The perfect guest. Yes, and, and the perfect episode to close at the year. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with us. I know myself and the audience is better for it today. Uh, have an awesome, happy new year, guys, with the families, and enjoy. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care, brother. Happy New Year. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. 2022 in the books. Um, take some opportunity today to reflect, right? Think about all the great things that happened for you. Maybe the not so great. For example, for me, spoke globally. It's where I met Neil. Um, exploded the community, the podcast. Landed a huge, lucrative book deal for a first-time author. Um, did great in business. Got engaged. But also, I was hit by a car. Uh, thank God physically unscathed. So take some time to reflect. But most importantly, shift the focus and the tone to how you like 2023 to go. Neil mentioned opportunities. I thought that was beautiful. Uh, my word for 2023 is available, right? I'm not so worried anymore about the how. I just want to continue to show up, do the best that I can, marry the process, divorce the outcome, and be available for all the amazing opportunities and abundance, like Dave mentioned, out there. Uh, Dave, thank you. It's always my partner in crime. Episode 93 in the books. We'll see everybody next week for episode 94. If you guys aren't familiar or didn't know Neil before today, Start following him, shoot him a message, let him know that you love the conversation. Um, we're going to do more with him as well. And thank you guys. Have an unbelievable night. Stay safe. 
Uh, and let's make 2023 the most epic and abundant and fulfilling and happy year of all time. The Bulls in your court. Love you guys.